Warning. Anime Out of Context contains spoilers, explicit language, and general tomfoolery. Neither of our hosts are experts on any topic, and you should not take their opinions as such. Listen at your own discretion, and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Anime Out of Context, the show where I attempt to explain the sometimes weird, sometimes wonderful, but always hilarious world of anime. And I blossom from my cocoon as a beautiful butterfly until I see the ugly world of anime which I crawl back inside. I'm Sean Rollins. I'm Remington Chase. Alright Remington, you are looking better since last time, quite frankly. I, I am, I am, in body and in mind. Yeah, you've gone through a bit of therapy to recover from the most recent uh, anime? Uh, yeah, it, it was very costly, it was very expensive. Uh, unfortunately, the East may have anime, but the West does have terrible health care, so e. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a problem. The West being America, which is the only West that matters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we're kind of as far west as it gets in some ways. <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah, and plus, we have the biggest flag. Plus, we're America. We're America. Oh, we're... Politics aside, Remington, are you feeling good enough to jump back into the world of anime? Am I ever? The answer is no, so let's do it anyway. Uh, okay, w what are we getting started with this week, Sean? Oh, uh, well, today I figured I'd be a bit nice to you for once. Doubt. <laughs> Don't doubt me every time I try to do a nice thing, Remington. Okay, one quick question, Sean. Yes. Is it anime? Yes. Mm, feels real <laughs> doubtful. <laughs> anime is not inherently bad, Remington. No, not inherently. Just almost always in reality. Oh my god. What am I gonna do with you? One of these days, it'll be it. You'll run into a person on the streets and they'll just stab you for your opinions on anime. And that will be a sweet release. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, but I am actually being genuine this time. Uh, so much so that I'm actually going to be showing you uh, what currently on myanimelist.com is the second highest rated anime of all time. The second highest? Yeah. So when I inevitably dislike it because anime fans' opinions have been shown to be terrible time and time again, I will have a lot of people after me. Yes. Ooh. Yes, if you dislike this anime to... In extreme extent, let's say, we might not have a show anymore because we'll both be dead. Okay, with it being so high on the list, is it one that I would have heard about? Probably not. Uh, well, of course not. Why? Uh, <laughs> duh. You'd think that the most popular things would be uh, something you've heard of? Don't be ridiculous. Okay, Don't be ridiculous. so this means it's probably going to be, I'm going to guess, stupid, art housey type deal, something along the lines of, Akira Spirited Away, where it's very much so, oh, wow, it's a work of art. It's a masterpiece. A little bit, yes. Hey, I'm nailing this already. Uh, and funny you should mention those two, because we are doing a movie today, Remington. Okay. What? What's with the okay? The past two movies that we've done haven't been terrible, but haven't been great. To be fair, your opinion on Spirited Away is a very, very internalized, biased opinion. I don't know what you're talking about, Sean. I made some good points that were beyond my inherent bias, though my inherent bias does remain. Uh-huh. And Akira, we agreed on Akira. Let's be real. Yeah. Akira is quite the... Uh, that one's weird. <laughs> it's weird, but worth watching. Yeah. Like, I'm not upset I've watched it. I'm just upset that I've watched it three times. I don't know if it's good, but it's worthwhile. Agreed. But hopefully this will be the time where we get a movie for you that you actually enjoy. And obviously a lot of people enjoy this, because on Mal it has a ranking of about 9.15. Wow! Yeah. Okay, that's a very high ranking, possibly our highest ranking ever. Uh, our highest ranking ever was actually Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, all right, that one was good, so it yeah, works. Yeah, because if I remember correctly, that's like 9.23 or something like that. Okay, so with it being rated so high, I feel like it's got to be a Ghibli, right? It's, it's got to be a Ghibli. 
Surprisingly, it's not. Okay, well, that's all the anime movie knowledge that I have, so I'm in new territory. You are in brand new territory. Which... <laughs> Unless it's the Pokemon movie <laughs> that came out, like, 20 years ago. Then I have seen it, and I approve. Which one, though? There the like... very first one, obviously. There were none after that. <laughs> <laughs> Just the ones that have existed in my life, Sean. Duh. Your life, of course. Yeah. I, I assume if, that... if I have not seen them, then are they even real? Mm, so I assume that was what? Pokemon 2000 with Mewtwo? Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's the one everyone remembers, isn't yeah. it? Because it, it, that's like the one that actually made you feel emotions about Pokemon, which was a weird thing for a young, uh, influenced child, you know? So... If it's not Ghibli, is it Pokemon? It's not Pokemon. Damn, what would... is it? <laughs> it is a movie called uh, Kimi no Nawa. Kimi no Nawa. We've seen the word Nawa before, I think? You have. I have no idea where. Uh, so the English translation doesn't flow off the tongue as easily. It never does. Uh, but it, because it's just two words right next to each other. And that's pretty common. Uh, the title of this movie is called Your Name. Your Name. Yes. What? <laughs> Your Name. It, it, uh, Remington is my favorite anime. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's just called Your Name, Remington. Oh, you see, it's okay. So we're going to be watching Remington. What is Remington about? Uh, well, you're Remington, and you're about not liking anime. But no, we're watching mm. Your Name. Okay, so it's going to be a movie about a person who really doesn't like anime. I'm liking this premise so far. Uh, I feel like I sympathize with the protagonist. No, it's not about that at all. Although I don't think they have any opinions on anime in the show, from what I can tell. Like there was... So can I assume that they have negative opinions about anime? Probably not. Oh. No, you don't You don't get that lucky, bud. Uh, no, but this movie is called Your Name. Uh actually your name it's not remington i know how many times can we beat this joke to death before it maybe becomes funny <laughs> <laughs> we're no abbott and costello that's for certain all right so we're watching your name what is that at all so this is actually a relatively recent film for the anime community. oh okay 2016 oh okay quite recent yes it's and out of the great depression of the 2012 and surrounding years yeah no it's definitely not in that dark time period for a lot of serialized anime especially in the shonen genre we try not to talk about them but we kind of have to because yeah there's so many there's so many why are there so many that's, That's what I've been wondering since day one. So what is your name about? So it's a little hard to explain because as is the thing with movies is you don't want to explain too much because if you do, then you, it's like those trailers that show too much of the movie. Then you go see the movie and the only funny things were in the trailers. Of course. And that ruins the whole movie. Let me take a guess at what this is all about. Oh, I'd love to hear it. This is actually uh, about a, a young a young boy who's actually like an elemental spirit of sorts, and he's lost his name, and because he's lost his name, he's being trapped under, let's say, a witch of some sort, <laughs> and later on, he needs to find what his name is using the help of perhaps people from his past that he doesn't even recognize anymore, and then he learns his own name, and he's freed from that to be himself from that point. So you're just saying this is a prequel to Spirited Away? <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> very much so, Sean. That's my guess. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, considering that a lot of people rank this higher than Spirited Away. It's just Ghibli and drag. Ghibli and drag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No. <laughs> just no. All right, what is it? The only thing you got right was that it has a boy in it. Yeah. Uh, so it One for one. So this is a, I suppose you could say a sci-fi slice of life comedy. Not comedy. Well, it's got a little comedy. It's more of a sci-fi slice of life romance is what I'd call it. Okay, dangerous territory. Why is that dangerous? Sci-fi we've rarely explored other than, for example, Akira and I guess Sword Art Online. Mm -hmm. Romance, we've explored, and it's usually bad. Slice of life, we've explored, and it's hit or miss. Unless it's romance, then it's bad. I mean, Toradora wasn't bad. <laughs> Don't break my heart again, Remington. I could barely <laughs> handle it the one time. It, we'll see 
about Toradora. Oh, God. But, no, uh, so I say sci-fi. I'm saying sci-fi light. Okay, so they have lasers, but otherwise it's still normal. No, no, it's actually set in our time period. But maybe, like, a full metal alchemist type deal? Nope. So it's, like, it's that weird um, barrier between sci-fi and fantasy. Um, it's a little hard to explain. So what it is is it's the story of uh, two people that are of high school age. Uh, the girl is named uh, Mitsuha Miyamizu. All right, Mitsuha. Uh, and she lives in a rural countryside, small town, Japan. Uh, so, you know, those little tiny towns that are tucked away, but you go and you visit them, you think, wow, these places are beautiful and lovely to look at. But God, is it far away from everything. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I got you. And in the city of Tokyo, the heavy mo- metropolitan center lives the boy, uh, who is named Taki Tachibana. All right, Taki Tachibana, I like his name. It's got a good alliteration to it, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, so they are both just kind of going through their lives. Until? Yes, until. One day, Mitsuha awakens in a room that is not her own, and she suddenly finds herself living the dream life in Tokyo, because she's always wanted to go to the city, but she's never had the ability to. Ah, they've switched lives. This is Freaky Friday the anime. (laughs) I knew you were going to make that (laughs) reference. I just knew it. But you're not wrong. Freaky Friday is my favorite anime. Yes, they... (laughs) (laughs) Lindsay Lohan is best wife. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Even as a joke, that's too far. Too far of a goof, man. Too far. (laughs) But yeah, no, they wake up in each other's bodies. Okay. And of course, that's concerning. So, and they go through several days of this, uh, and it just happens randomly. They'll wake up one day and they'll be in the other person's body, and they're trying to figure out what's going on, while at the same time trying to get in contact with each other, because they live in completely different parts of the country. Ah, so gradually they learn more about themselves and each other. I'm gonna guess they're gonna, like, write notes for the other to find once they get back to their own body and things like that. So they're going to start communicating, even though they've sort of never met in a weird way. But of course, they've met more than any two people could ever meet because they become each other. And so there's a lot of weird interplay between how you know somebody else and how you know yourself and what is the sense of self, what is the different relationships that we have with one another, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like... I joke and say you nailed it and won a lot, but you actually did. (laughs) (laughs) For the first time, I expect there to be confetti and streamers. I want there to be some happy celebratory sound effects put in about now, because I'm proud of them. (laughs) You need all the praise you can afford at this point. It's true. But yeah, it's honestly exactly what you described. It's not a new idea. Uh, but it's done in such a way that is really charming. The characters have a lot of personality to them. Uh, there's some really funny moments in it as well. And honestly, it's a fairly human show with a lot of that dramatized elements to it that make it an interesting watch. Okay, so I've done this for quite a few different things that we've watched, but there are a few things that I'm going to be looking for in your name. Okay. First... This is one of the highest rated things we have ever done on this podcast. So I'm going to be going in with some decently high expectations. And unfortunately, I am very well aware that this could lead to me being disappointed and a lot of people sending us emails saying, oh yeah, I found it and I didn't know the hype around it and that's why I was so impressed, etc, etc. But the fact is, I know the hype around it. Can it live up to the hype? I need to see that it is different from everything else that we've seen so far, whether that be in the way that it goes about its concept, its novel ideas, or if it just has that amount of polish to it. I'm going in very tentatively optimistic, but also quite skeptical. Yeah, so the thing about this show, Remington, is polish is definitely something this show has in spades. It is one of the most gorgeous films I've ever seen from the anime community, which is saying something because I've watched a lot of Ghibli movies. I've seen 
you know, a lot of Akira, Akira, though grotesque in a lot of ways, is still visually stunning. Um, yeah, both of those were very visually stunning. However, as we saw with me in those two, visually stunning can only take you so far, mm -hmm. especially with me. I think both of those make phenomenal art pieces, but I still am unsure how good of movies as those make. So I will be looking and judging it based on how good of a movie it ends up being. And it'll be interesting to see exactly where it lies. Honestly, I think you might like this better than the other two, simply due to the fact that it's a concept you're familiar with. We're all familiar with it. It's been a thing since the days of the original Star Trek series, if I'm not mistaken. The idea of switching bodies with someone and learning how to live their lives and the experiences that they go through on a daily and how your personality can change the way their friends and family feel about the person you're in and you just... get a prince you get a popper bada bing bada boom ta-da exactly just the idea of switching roles locations and personality types and in this case switching bodies and genders is kind of a major thing as well because i don't know about you but if i got plopped into a girl's body i'd be a little confused traumatized and a bit curious <laughs> <laughs> The boobs. Yeah, uh huh? Let's be real, they're teenagers. Why wouldn't you be curious about that? <laughs> but all in all, whether you like this movie or not is going to hang on whether or not the art style does it for you, which I think it will. Whether the characters have just enough of that charm for you to really get attached to them, because they're not the most unique characters in the world, but they do have enough of a foundation to make them semi-interesting, especially when you throw this type of person into a different type of person scenario. And the big thing is whether or not you think they handled the overall plot point well. Because there might be some twists and turns you might not expect, or you might expect, and if they handle them well, we'll have to see. But honestly, I think this is a fantastic movie. I think it's worth watching. Everybody should go see it. And even before you finish the second half of our podcast, go watch it. Just... You don't even need Remington's recommendation. He'll, it, His opinion doesn't matter at this point. His <laughs> See, opinion does not matter. This is a good movie. Go watch it. Sean, you saying that makes me feel like I may not enjoy it. That's because you don't like anything good, Remington. If by anything good, you mean the abomination that has been the platter of anime you have force-fed me since day one, then I agree with you. But if by anything good, you mean good things. Mm, I don't know about that, Sean. How dare you, Remington, blaming only me for this. <laughs> a lot of them were recommendations from people listening to us. Oh, of course, and, and this one I'm guessing was another recommendation. Yeah, I've had quite a few recommendations for this one. Uh, primarily, the first three emails that come to mind are sent by James, Hundley, and Jackson. All right, James, Hundley, Jackson. I'm going to have opinions about you three if in your mind in just a few moments when we get back in part two. Yeah, and I think he'll have mostly positive things to say, but it's Remington and he's kind of a bastard, so it's hard to tell. All right, well, I think with that we should get going, Sean. All right, let's go watch the entirety of Kimi no Nawa. <laughs> Gentlemen, we are back after watching the entirety of the hit 2016 movie, Your Name. Remington, you seem not upset for once in your goddamn life. How does that feel? It is one of the few occasions that I have watched anime and I'm not filled with self-loathing and a general disdain for everything around me. Which is quite the accomplishment in your book, my friend. Oh, certainly. So, Your Name. This movie w is currently the highest rated film on MyAnimeList.com. Its fan appeal is so absurdly high. Everyone seems to love this movie to death, uh, whether it's the art, the characters, the story, the twists and turns that you find in it. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen it, I am re-emphasizing again. Go watch it. It's worth it. Two hours of your time, totally worth it. But my question for you, Remington, is where do you stand? 
So, Sean, I have said multiple times that when it comes to the anime community, that they do not have tremendous opinions, and often our opinions diverge from one another, usually quite strongly. Usually to the point where people are coming at us with pitchforks and flamethrowers. Well, they can put those pitchforks down for this one. Oh? This is going to be an overwhelmingly positive part two. What? Remy, are, are you saying you like this movie? I think I might love it. Oh my god, it's about damn time! I've shown you three movies now, three of the greatest anime movies of all time by large appeal and account, and the first two you kind of slaughtered to pieces, but now this one, the most recent in the long line of good anime films, you actually like it a lot? In fact, you bring up the other two that we've seen, namely Spirited Away and Akira, and I think we should start by making a few comparison of my feelings towards them and my feelings towards this. Yes, because an anime movie and an anime TV series are fundamentally different. While they have a lot of the same imagery, traits, and features, there's definitely a major difference between a full... TV series, and a feature-length film. So, some immediate comparisons that I will make. I said of Akira and Spirited Away that they were great art pieces, but I didn't tremendously adore them as movies. With your name, it was, in fact, also a tremendous art piece. It is the single most beautiful thing we have seen on this podcast, bar none. It is not close. We have had some amazing art styles, some art that I have adored and loved. Madoka Magica comes to mind immediately, but nothing has been this truly stunning visually. Maybe Akira, but I don't even think Akira gets to this level of beauty. And, uh, just for a frame of reference, Akira came out in 1988. Which is still ridiculously impressive. Mm-hmm. I think that if Akira came out in 2016, that it might have a chance. But with your name, oh my word, so stunning. Yes, the art style and just the backgrounds, the combination of CG, hand-painted backgrounds, hand-drawn characters, and oh my god, the animation on some of the simple things they do. Truly, every single little detail, and even when it came to the protagonists, you knew who exactly they were, while at the same time never having protagonist syndrome. Every character in the background felt almost the same art style as the protagonists in a good way. They were all high quality. They were all distinct. They were all interesting. It didn't have the thing where, for example, you say, oh, wow, this girl is a very beautiful girl, and you're like, yeah, she's an anime girl. No, you can tell the difference between the anime characters very distinctly. But that's just all the aesthetics, which we could drone on and on and on about, trust me. But I'll just suffice it to say, this is the most beautiful anime we have seen at all in our entire podcasting career, and it's almost not even close, at least for most of the contenders. I understand that completely. I mentioned in our Akira episode that Akira itself had a lot of influences on anime culture, art design, and drawing as a whole, and your name is a good example of some of the influences that Akira had on the anime community. Especially with one part where it has this sort of past dream sequence, which it is psychedelic, but not in the way that you tend to see psychedelics used. It is very visual, very colorful, very surreal, but in a completely different way than is usually done, and that definitely showed its Akira influences during that portion. In fact, that portion is one of the most impressive scenes in the entire film, and you want to know how I know it's an impressive scene, aside from just me loving it and you loving it? How? Uh, we watched the movie with a couple of our friends, because movies are always better with friends. Of course. And one of our good friends, was incre- who's a very stoic individual, as soon as the scene started up and we started commenting it uh, under our breaths at it, he was like, shh, 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 shh. I want to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely see the impact that it has. And something I think your name does incredibly well is how accessible it is. And we'll get to this, especially when it comes to the story, but we've seen three very elevated anime movies, and all of them have been accessible to different points, with Akira probably being the least accessible of the bunch, but I would argue your name is the most accessible of the bunch, which 
sounds so derogatory for some people, which always confuses me, but I am a firm believer that if you can make a lot of people like you, that's an objectively good thing. Now, you may have a lot of people like you for the wrong reasons, but that is not that does not make the fact that people like you a negative thing I by any means. I feel like, Remington, you are kind of pointing to yourself a little bit with our podcast where you usually make a lot of people hate you. Now, usually those people are wrong, though, is the difference. Ah, uh, yeah, uh. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. I think they're picking up the pitchforks again, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> but to continue along that line, you have characters who... If I'm being completely honest, it's not that they are going to be wildly memorable to me, but they fit their role so well. They weren't just tropes, but they didn't work too hard to being wildly specific or niche or, oh, look, it's, yeah, that character has those elements to them. I'm always going to remember them as the wacky superhero. These are just people, and you're going to remember them like you remember people. It was so human, and I've ranted before about how I adore the extensive humanity of things. And with the plot, so many fantastical things happen with it. It plays with that sense of space, self, body, time, all of these different elements. And it never even tries to explain it too much. It has some things that are sort of hinted at and played with, but it doesn't say here's a concrete explanation which i think is a plus because it utilized it well sometimes things need to explain themselves other times things try to explain themselves they dig themselves into a contradictory hole and it just turns into a mess and it makes you extra angry fortunately this was a time where its execution was great and it didn't need to explain itself too much because of how well it was done and with all of the characters one thing I've ranted ad nauseum on this podcast has been anime with characters with poor relationships to their friends, or even worse, where the only world that exists are the protagonists and their immediate interactions. Neither of those are true for your name. There is a wide world that exists beyond every single character, and you see inklings of that absolutely littered everywhere, whether it happens with the secondary characters, the tertiary characters, the background characters, and all of their relationships with one another are so pronounced, so sincere and authentic, you can really feel the warmth between absolutely everyone. I think I'm gonna cry, Remington. That was the most positive thing you've ever said on our show. It's absolutely crazy how big a fan I have become of your name. I think this is easily a top three anime that we've watched, and I don't know where it belongs in the top three. I'd have to think about that, but that is where it is going. Oh my god. The, oh, happy days. I don't want to even imagine what I'd have to do for damage control if it turned out you disliked this movie, or worse, had indifferent opinions on it. I think the worst that I can say about it is that it occasionally fell into a handful of the cliches when it came to the body switching, like the convenient misunderstandings that happen, or... Oh, you're acting a bit strange today. Oh, but, but did you guys do this thing that the person who switched into my body did? Nah, don't worry about it. We won't discuss it. Those are the biggest critiques I can have, but it still handled those cliches quite well and quite strongly. Honestly, I think it is the best representation of this particular plotline I've ever seen because everyone knows a body switching story, whether it's in one of your favorite kids shows, Star Trek or a bunch of other movies, or Freaky Friday, as you so pointed hey, hey. out. It kind of cut out a lot of that bullshit that you've seen in every single body-switching form of media. Truly, it simplified the entire process, and it was through the simplicity in ideas that it was able to emphasize the nuance of the world and the characters and their desires living within it. You understand who these characters are. You understand what they want and their motivations at every single turn. And now we start to enter where I'm going to begin ranting about the metaphors. Because, Sean, you know I love metaphors and symbolism and ideas that are brought throughout media. And your name was chock full of them. So basically, you like things that aren't shoved in your face and like, hey, 
This is what this is. You understand? I like it when I can take the meaning out of it rather than being force-fed. So show and don't tell is what you're saying. It's really crazy of an idea. I think that should really be a popularized idea. Yeah, it's almost like all good movies are better at showing things than they are at just telling you things. <laughs> yeah, it's really mm. strange. But anyway, metaphors, they're... Oh my god, I could spend hours upon hours digesting each individual metaphor, but I want to see what really jumped out at you. What made you really think, hold on, that is really clever and interesting, and oh my god, I need to talk about this. I would say that there are a few ideas that really pop out to me. The first is the matter of time, how past, future, present all interact, and the way that Your Name explored it not just through the large scale of comparing rural to a very modern Tokyo, comparing the different times that they live in just three years apart, the difference that a few years can make, all of these different things brought together, the comparing, the contrasting, the importance of looking back, looking forward, as well as living in the now, but also the power that time can have, the fact that it can wear down memories, stories, and impacts. It can change relationships so drastically. Time is truly the most powerful tool out there, whether that be for forming bonds or for breaking them. It creates, it destroys, that's what time does. And that was really emphasized in so many ways, both macro with cities and micro with relationships and the self within your name. Okay, give me a second to process, because, oh my god, I, I haven't experienced this much positivity from you since we went and saw Cats together. <laughs> <laughs> cats is my favorite anime. <laughs> not, not the musical, just... Cats, Just domestic. cats, yeah. <laughs> Do you know uh, how a cat meows in Japanese? How does a cat meow in Japanese? Oh, it's just, yeah. I don't know why I expected anything different. As a brief tangent before I continue on the metaphors, there were also dogs, and they were very cute dogs. Every single animal in the show was adorable, and if you love cute animals and you weren't certain of watching it or not, do so now. You'll get your moe fix. I certainly did. So the next metaphor that I want to talk about, the next symbol, are the idea of knots and strings, both being tied, untied, interwoven together. And you have this obviously shown with, uh, what's her name? Mitsuha. Mitsuha. You have this obviously shown with Mitsuha's family and their cord weaving, right? But also with the symbol that they constantly use of her throwing out her hairband and, uh, Taki catching it and them being connected through that, that being handed back and forth. The links that tie us all together, the paths that we are on in our lives, crossing and interweaving and oftentimes diverging. And we will never know when we will cross paths again or if we ever will. We never know whether it's the last time or whether this is the first time, the beginning of something great that will continue ever further and sometimes it gets knotted up and it gets complicated but often it's still reparable it never is it so far past the point that it can't be undone that it can't be unwoven for better or for worse <sighs> remington you're making me such a happy boy right now i just want you to tell you i at this point i'm about ready to forgive you for all the crap you said on toradora <laughs> 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 We're coming a long way, Sean. Yeah, our relationship might be saved just yet. <laughs> and the final idea is one that I touched upon in the first half before even seeing it, and this is one I guessed would occur, and it certainly did, and that's the idea of the combination of self and knowing somebody else. The fact of the matter is we can never truly understand another individual perfectly. We are flawed in our understanding. We see them on the outside, but even if we see them through their own eyes, even if we walk a mile in their shoes, we still can never fully, truly understand them. There is a barrier there, but it's that sense of closeness, how close we can get despite it being an inadequate understanding, and how much we learn about ourselves through empathizing with each other, through the relationships that we build, through the lives that we lead, and seeing 
not only how we live, but how others live. All of that combined to show those relationships and the self meshed into this beautiful mosaic, this great tapestry that oftentimes we'll never be able to fully understand, sure, but that doesn't make it any less beautiful or any less memorable or any less important and meaningful. I think I'm gonna cry, Remington. Like, holy crap. Man, and those are just three of the metaphors you can find in this show. Oh, yeah, and there are plenty more. I often, when I ranked all of the different anime, the criteria that I used would be, would I be interested in watching it again? And I acknowledged that the movies were going to have a disadvantage. Spirited Away was going to have a disadvantage because it's a movie and I don't watch movies again. But... This is a movie I may not mind watching again, which is a very strange experience for me. The fact that I would even consider it, because I don't do that. This, and this is going to be the highest compliment I can give on the podcast. This is not just a good anime movie, Sean. This is a phenomenal movie. Holy shit, Remington. Yes! Oh my god, yes, we finally agree on something 100%. Oh my god, I, d I thought it would take much longer, quite frankly. Um, but man, yeah, the metaphors in this movie are so powerful. Uh, you mentioned the braided cords and the symbolism behind them. Uh, that is actually an expanded upon version of a very popular metaphor uh, What uh, that involves tying fate between two people. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of the red string of fate, Remington? I have, yes. Yes, it's a very, very popular metaphor for two people being interconnected through the un power of the universe itself and though they are connected how they can come closer and drift farther apart but all the while remaining together in some sense of the word and your name takes the red string of fate and adds layers upon layers and braiding it into a bunch of cords and tying the entire universe into a big mosaic of threads and that's fucking beautiful! It truly is. Where I think both Spirited Away and Akira try to overcomplicate the simple ideas that they started with and at times failed to hit their mark, especially when it came to the plot and ideas. With your name, they kept it simple where it needed to be so they could expand on what truly matters. And thus, they were able to show the emotional reality behind all of these different stories and characters' lives. Which is amazing. The thing about Your Name is, and what I was worried about, is the fact that Your Name is not a terribly original story. It's a concept that has been done time and time again, twisted and tweaked in a variety of different ways that, quite frankly, seems a bit tired and overplayed. But what Your Name does is it takes those tropes uses them, and then goes an extra mile. This could have been just a simple side-by-side -side tale of two people switching bodies, but it was more than that. And, of course, we're getting into some heavy spoilers right now, and if you haven't watched it by now, what are you even doing here? You have made a mistake. How have you heard me, the hater of all anime, gush about it, and you still aren't convinced? Yes, from this point onward, though, we are going to talk about specific major plots in the film. Because it's kind of hard not to, and we've been holding back, and Remington may have let one or two things slip already. So if you are at this point and you haven't watched it yet, what's the matter with you? Go watch it! That's my last warning. Anyway. So, Remington, the big important thing that really sets this apart is that difference in time and the finality of the event that changed the way the, their lives were forever. That being the Comet. Yes, as it turns out, the beautiful comet, as it flew through the sky, it splits into multiple pieces, one of which goes upon this small town, completely destroying it and killing hundreds of people, the majority of the population. So, where Taki believes that he has been living, coinciding with his current time, that just turns out to not be true he has been inhabiting this body that has been dead for almost three years and that is probably the biggest twist in the show almost 
Because as soon as we realize that three years, that's a big difference. And they do it in such a subtle way. The way they do it is they have Taki trying to call Mitsuha after a date went well, but not well enough. And it cuts back to Mitsuha's perspective, and you see the comet falling. And then out of nowhere, it cuts back to him, and it says the number cannot be connected. And you look up in the sky behind him, and there's no comet. This astronomical event that is viewable throughout the entire country of Japan is not behind him in the sky. And at that point, you realize, wait a minute, where's the comet? Something has gone awry here. Something is wrong. And you're interested in what, but it, you probably aren't putting the pieces together exactly where they belong, even if you have a general idea. So when Taki goes and he wants to go to that village so he can finally meet her, and he doesn't see the village. Instead, what he sees is a crater much, much larger than what it was supposed to be. He sees a town in shambles. He sees destruction. He hears the stories, and he even gets to see the records of the deaths. The person he had been sharing bodies with the person that, at this point, he's fallen in love with has been dead for three years. Which, you joke about that trope in media a lot. The idea of a spooky situation where you're talking to a person and then the big twist at the end is, oh my god, they were dead for blah 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 blah, three years. Oh no, it's Bruce Willis again. <laughs> uh, you, you hear that trope a lot and people make fun of it a lot. And it's gotten to that level where a lot of people will think, well, you can't actually use that in a story anymore. because Let's be real, who's not going to see that coming? But I'll be honest, this one really catches you off guard. And this one, it does it by the book with this twist. It's totally, oh, this town? But it's been destroyed for three years. And somehow, amazingly, it's not a ridiculously hilarious thing when it happens, even though it is so by the book. And once you reach this moment, it is emotional. Taki hasn't been able to switch bodies in quite a while by this point. He doesn't understand what's going on. But then, after all of this destruction, he realizes that he can go back to the shrine. The shrine that was so important. And he can maybe, maybe find something. And find something he does. It, it is a very powerful, impactful moment. And one thing the show does really well is it does not leave any loose ends whatsoever. Every bit of foreshadowing, every phrase or term that they give you, every ideal, every concept, all gets wrapped up and tied up in a nice knot. It's used just so. If you hear something that sounds mildly interesting in the first half, that will be utilized in a very Chekhov's gun manner in the second half, and not shoehorned in, but rather it fits so perfectly. And something else that I really enjoyed, when they're finally able to switch again, when they're finally able to even interact, for the first time they've been properly able to interact after all of this craziness of trying to go back and save the town from the comet. After an hour and a half of interacting in Around the Bush means, they finally see each other for a brief moment at twilight. And that is a phenomenal moment. And that is the single only moment where one of them expresses, I love you, to the other. And that's it. And they don't even say it. They write it down to the other. It's not said. It's not vocalized. It's not made a huge deal because it's important enough. And they know that you will understand how important that is. I knew they were going to end up together one way or another, and even though I doubted a few times, that was the foregone conclusion. And normally, as I've mentioned, that's okay, but it's often a very slight negative mark. That was not the case for your name. This was actually going to be my biggest concern for you, Remington, because I had in the back of my mind a couple ways this could go. Obviously, the ideal way was that our opinions resonate and we love it to death, which clearly is the case. 
But I was worried that you weren't going to like the happy ending. I was worried the fact that they, again, spoilers, that they at the very end of the movie, the very end of the movie, they reconnect. I was worried you weren't going to like that. I was worried that was going to be the kind of thing that, you know, you felt was a little too cliche and was overdone and it would have been better if she had actually died uh, without failure, which would have been an interesting story. But at the same time, how would you feel? I, I think that they did it very interesting because initially, once you see Taki again, you don't know if they actually saved themselves from the comet. But then you see the friends, the, her best friends around, Tessie and Sayaka, and you say, oh, so that means that they did survive. It's changed because they were in the records of the death. So if they lived, that means the plan succeeded to some degree. But wait, what does that mean for her? And then you see that she is alive. And you see that both of them vaguely remember, but on the tip of their tongue is a vague, dreamlike memory of one another. And they're searching, and they're searching for something that they don't know. And that also could be a great level of finality. But then they do find each other, and they do have that spark of recognition, and there's a moment where they possibly pass each other up still one final moment, but then they don't. And there were so many moments that it could have ended, and I think all of them are good endings. And so with it ending up as the happy ending, is it the best way it could have ended? I don't know. But am I pleased with how it ended? Yes. And... In the theme of reviewing movies and TV and so many other forms of media, we always like to make fun of titles. We like to make fun of titles when they're being said in the film because it's a very, oh, roll credits moment, you know? You know, Back to the Future? Hell, hell, they said it. Roll credits. You know, it's very, another cliche, another trope that is overdone and made fun of frequently. And with a simple phrase is your name, said multiple times throughout the movie, like the first time you see it, you're like, eh, it's a roll credits moment. You're like, you get that little joke in the back of your head and you're enjoying that feature. It's fine. And then they say it one more time in a more serious moment and you're like, that actually, that actually kind of made me feel something a little bit. And then the final, the final fucking phrase from both of them at the end of the series is, what's your name? And it's a beautiful moment, and it captures absolutely everything. Ultimately, this has been one of the best movies I have seen in quite a while, and I've seen some good ones lately. And so I was wildly impressed. But Sean, don't you worry. I'll be back to hating anime next week, and I'll be back <laughs> to my cynical <laughs> self. It just wouldn't be the same otherwise, I don't think. We are a comedy podcast, after all. We're supposed to be funny. I, I would like to reaffirm for our listeners that I still don't like anime just because I happen to love one anime movie. Don't you fret. <laughs> oh, God. It's going to make what I have to show you next week all the more interesting, quite frankly. Oof. Oh, don't be such a baby, Remington. There's so much more anime you have yet to see and so many different things. You might find something else you love, or I might just break your soul again. Oh, uh, not looking forward to next week. <laughs> so is there anything else you'd like to say about your name before we close things up? Because we could honestly talk for hours upon hours about just about everything in the movie. Anything that you want to say to finally convince people, even if they sat through the spoilers without watching it, which... What's wrong with you guys? Come on. I think that we have covered everything that we need to cover. I would just encourage everyone listening to watch your name. I would heartily recommend it as one of the best viewing experiences we have easily had on the podcast. Possibly in our entire lives. And with that, Remington, would you like to sit down and watch your name again with me? You know what? I think I would. I can't wait. Thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed our long, in-depth tirades on the metaphors of film and the weird dichotomies between fate, then leave a review on whatever platform you listen on, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Podbean, 
Stitcher, or honestly, if you just want to spread by word of mouth, that works even better. And if you would like to contact us directly, whether it be feedback, comment, question, or a recommendation, then you can send an email over on to animeoutofcontext at gmail.com. And you could follow us on Twitter at AnimeConPod. Which is a new experience for us, so give us your, give us uh, the benefit of the doubt. We're, we're not social media people. We're figuring it out. Feel free to teach us how Twitter works. We're old men in young people's bodies. It's fine. <laughs> But once again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and what's your name? <laughs>